What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel, welcome to the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet VGC 2023 Regulation D video. Today I want to talk about five Pokemon that I just really believe are really strong sleeper picks in the format. If you don't know what a sleeper pick is, it's basically a Pokemon that's usage stats don't really reflect how good of a Pokemon it is in the current format. And yeah, we're going to discuss these Pokemon, why I think they have a niche, and why I think you can use them, and what sort of teams you would fit them on. So yeah, let's get into it. Uh, if you guys enjoyed this thing point in time, do me a favor, leave a like in the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications because I bring you daily competitive Pokemon content, and answer my comment question of the day, which is, what Pokemon do you believe is a very good sleeper pick in the current format? Anyways, let's get into it. Also, I just realized that, hold on, hold on, my my showdown is the wrong size, automatically hi hide the taskbar, yep, okay, and make this full screen, there we go. I don't know why, sometimes my computer will make the taskbar, like, not hidden, and it messes with the ratio of the screen. Anyways, so uh, I guess we'll just start off with this one. Uh, these two were in the thumbnail. So my first pick, these are in no particular order, by the way, but uh, Ferrigarath. And I think Ferrigarath is one that I am starting to consider less and less of a sleeper pick because people are picking up on how useful it can be. If we actually look at the results of some recent tournaments, we'll use the Beanie Brawl uh, number 20 for this one. We can see there is a Ferrigarath in fourth place on Borgie's team. We can see further Ferrigarath usage a little bit down. Uh, in 11th and 12th with Kino in Jin Hao Jiang. I think that's how you pronounce it. I'm really bad at pronouncing um, names like that. And of course, Kotori's team. So what you'll notice is that every one of these Ferrigraphs are running the best ability on Ferrigraph. It's not even a competition. It is Armor Tail. So why would you run Armor Tail on your Ferrigraph? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, also, Borgi is running Ally Switch. That's crazy, man. Um, Armor Tail is an ability that works just like Queenly Majesty and Dazzling. It makes it so your opponents can't use priority moves versus your partners uh, or your team in general. So that's useful for one particular reason, and that's because there is a combination of Pokemon going around. It is Chen Pao, Dragonite, and also uh, Urshifu Rapid Strike. You'll see them in a lot of top cuts. Like it got second this time. It's won a couple of, uh, of online events. We see it everywhere. This combination of Pokemon is really strong because Chen Pao will activate the Sword of Ruin, dropping everything's defense, and Dragonite will just use like either Life Orb, Choice Band, some like attack boosting item, and then click Terra Normal, Extreme Speed, and everything. And obviously, Dragonite's attack stat is super, super high, 134. Like you might not think that's like incredibly high, but when you take into account that it can't be flinched or intimidated, and it can run Adamant Choice Band with Stab because of Terrestrialization, uh, on this move, yeah, you're going to be like one to two shotting literally everything. Along with that, um, Urshifu Rapid Strike is a Pokemon that can use Sword of Ruin to hit even harder, despite the fact it has 130 base attack and access to Surging Strikes, especially with that boost from either like a Choice Band or a Mystic Water, or if you're really quirky, the Splash Plate. Anyways, point is, uh, these Pokemon all rely on priority moves to some extent. Chen Pao's main dark stab in this format is Sucker Punch. Uh, Dragonite needs to click E-Speed to get most of the damage it wants to get done done, unless it's clicking, you know, uh, Outrage, which Ferrigarath for the most part will actually run Terra Fairy anyway, so that's actually like really good into it. Um, and yeah, being able to block these moves allows for your Trick Room teams or just teams in general to operate a little bit more safely in the format. If we go back to Borgie's team, we can take a look at it. Uh, we see that the Ferrigraph does have option to click Trick Room, which most of these Pokemon aren't Trick Room Pokemon, but Heatran does appreciate it in certain situations. Like, it's not like the slowest Pokemon ever, but Heatran under Trick Room is going to be better into stuff like Rillaboom and Fluttermane than if it was outside of Trick Room, obviously. So yeah, uh, that's like super useful. If we look at the other Ferrigraph teams, if I can find them. Here's the 11th place Ferrigraph team. We see Rocky Helmet, Armor Tail, Terra Water, Hyper Voice, uh, Psychic Imprisoned in Trick Room. And that's another thing you can do with a Ferrigraph. Ferrigraph, rather than being a Trick Room center, can actually just prevent it outright. You have Trick Room, you have Imprison. Now, let's say you want to bring your Ferrigraph into a matchup where you don't want Trick Room to go up. Guess what? Bam, no Trick Room for them. Ursulina will not sweep you. That is like just a really useful thing on this Pokemon. Not to mention its stats are actually pretty decent. 120 base HP means that even with 70 defense, you're eating hits pretty well. Let's actually do a really quick calc for this. So, Rigoraph. Let's do like a blank set. Uh, let me scroll. This is the wrong damage calc. Here we go. <laughs> I was going to say like that, that calc isn't like terribly accurate. 
here. So let's say you do like max HP just for general stuff and you want to eat like a Chien Pao throat chop, right? Throat chop 120. You could run like a bold nature. You don't, you actually really probably want to. It's like a, it's a fairly bulky Pokemon once you have that bold nature on it. And it doesn't take much to live that. 76 defense with the bold nature. You still have a higher special attack stat, so you could even afford to go with like a modest nature and still live the hit, or quiet, I guess, if you're going to go for Trick Room. You only have to hit 110, you know. Now you're living that hit. You can invest into your special attack a little bit more. It's a, you know, it's a solid deal. Solid deal. Really good Pokemon. So yeah, Frigograph, definitely a sleeper pick. Gastrodon. Now, some of you guys might say Gastrodon is not a sleeper pick. I think Gastrodon has never not been a sleeper pick. I think Gastrodon, actually maybe 2017. Uh, Gastrodon's a sort of Pokemon that flies under the radar for the majority of the format and then just shows up as soon as Urshfu Rapid Strike or like Kyogre show up and Urshfu Rapid Strike now exists and rain teams are really good. So we do see the occasional Gastron. I'm actually not certain if there's one in top cut here, but we have seen a few uh, from time to time. Yeah, I'm not seeing any right now. I'm probably missing one, uh, but there are a ton of really powerful water type attackers in this format. You have your like Azumarill, which uh, exists from time to time. You obviously have Urshifu Rapid Strike, which is like really solid in this format. Other water types that you should look out for. There are still the occasional Gyarados, which obviously won this event um, on Neil's team uh, right here. Uh, but obviously we have Basque Legion on those rain sweeping teams and Dondozo, which will want to click Wave Crash uh, occasionally from time to time still. Uh, and when I say like occasionally, I mean like every Dondozo usually has Wave Crash, but it's not often you see Dondozo anymore, but it still exists. Obviously it got second here. Uh, but yeah, Gastronon uh, has a lot of tools beyond that uh, Storm Drain, but Storm Drain being able to protect partners like partner Ursa Luna or other just generally not wanting to get hit by water type moves Pokemon, like a partner Arcanine, uh, whether it's Hisui or regular, probably Hisui right now. Hisui Arcanine is actually really good. Uh, or even just like your ground type partners, your um, Landruses, etc. It's it's a really solid Pokemon for protecting Pokemon versus that. Uh, but also just the bulk that you get out of it with like Citrus Berry or Leftovers, along with the tools like Yawn, um, Earth Power, Clear Smog is like a move that I've seen from time to time on these guys, which is really solid. And honestly, just like Protect. It doesn't even really run water moves that like for damage anymore. It's like best water move is Muddy Water, which I still see, right? But I, but obviously like you want to run Protect on this guy for like the recovery. So sometimes I'll see water moves just dropped outright in exchange for Clear Smog to better go into Dondozos. Because this thing is, despite the fact that it's 68 defense, still pretty bulky. It has sort of that Farigraph thing going on where it has a really high HP stat and not too great of a defense stat. So you're just able to like invest heavily into the defense stat to live things. So yeah. Also, just getting a special attack boost on your Earth Powers and Muddy Waters every time you switch into a water move is really good in this format, man. It's, it's just a powerful thing. Uh, my next pick is Glacier, which I might have saw one up here somewhere. Uh, I forget, but yeah, it didn't do like super well in this one. But I, I do consider Glacier actually a really solid pick in this format. Um, not only does it basically have like min-max stats to make it feel like a like regular like box legendary Pokemon, uh, but also, it's just like, this is the generation of ice types. I truly think this is the ice type generation. Uh, you know, you would run like a standard set like Protect, uh, Icicle Crash, or Icicle Spear if you don't want to like miss. Uh, it does have access to like Stomping Tantrum in close combat still. That'll allow you to hit a lot of things. Uh, but it's able to run like Terra Water to deal with a bunch of the weaknesses that come with like ice typing. And I've seen some run like either Clear Amulet or even like this uh, Assault Vest set, but I have seen occasionally this set run around it's like clear amulet and you drop close combat or uh swords dance and under trick room this is actually a really scary pokemon a lot of people don't realize how slow glacier is but it is the exact same speed stat as amoongus so if you're facing a non-zero speed amoongus and you have a zero speed glacier guess what bada bing bada boom it's gone chilling nay is also a really good ability it's a clone of moxie right i this is my twin evil twin brother uh it will allow you to get an attack boost every time you score a ko so it's a snowballing Pokemon. Uh, I have actually run a rental team where they run Terra Fire to prevent being burned along with a clear amulet. And that will actually make it so you're basically impossible to stop once you like get swept or once you like get going on your sweep. Uh, you, I mean, you have to miss this move, but yeah. Base 145 attack is the same as Landorus, but you have like a positive matchup into Landorus. 100 HP and 130 defense means that like you're even gonna be able to take like facades from like Ursaluna. So if we actually pull this up, Glacier, that's the wrong calc. I'm closing that calc. 
<laughs> I keep opening it up for some reason. So Glacier Assault Vest Set versus like Ursa Luna, Trick Room Guts. We can see that that facade with just max HP and no defense investment is doing 94% maximum. That is really good. Your Ice Go Crash, you're doing 70 to 83%. You're gonna get two of those off in a row because you're under Trick Room, but also it's taking Flame Orb damage. So after just a little bit of chip, you're KOing that thing. It's like really good. And you can pair it with a bunch of really strong Trick Room partners. Amoongus, I would argue, is its best partner because you know you wanna be able to redirect away those hits from it. You're gonna be able to Pollen Puff it to get some recovery and it's gonna be a really annoying Pokemon to take down. So yeah, Glacier, definitely a huge pick. Bronzong, I actually think is my strongest contender for a Pokemon that is just seriously flying under the radar. There's a lot of things Bronzong can do in this format, especially with Terra. Uh, not only does Bronzong have perfect defensive coverage into Ursa Luna teams, which are obviously quite good right now. We see a few Ursa Luna uh, scattered throughout this top cut, uh, but also it is a Pokemon with access to the combination of Imprison and Trick Room if you really want, but you don't even need to do that. Bronzong can actually, or it can, it can function as a, sort of like a, a Gudra, but with Trick Room on it. Gudra right now like to run that like heavy slam, um, protect uh acid armor and um what's it called body press set i mean bronzong still gets body press you can run trick room iron defense if i could actually hit the right key body press and like a final move i think protect is probably the best but you also have access to a bunch of other like very very useful tools actually as a matter of fact you could run this set and it deals with not only the um <laughs> Not only like opposing Trick Room Pokemon, but also if you bring it into Gudra, Gudra doesn't do anything and you just outright beat it because you're taking nothing from Heavy Slam. You're covering everything off with leftovers and you're going to be able to just counter sweep it with Body Press. Terra Water, I would argue, is another one of its best defensive Terras. And yeah, I mean, like it has low HP, but it has super high defenses. You just invest a little bit more heavily into the special defense stat. Make it so you can tank like a uh, Shadow Ball or like a when you're Terra Water, a Terra Fairy Moonblast from Fluttermane. And you're... Good to go, I think. If you really want, you can drop in prison for like Gyro Ball or Heavy Slam or whatever you want. But yeah, I think that uh, Bronzong is actually like a really solid Pokemon in this format that a lot of people just straight up haven't thought about for some reason. And yeah, I mean, it does well into a lot of things. Iron Hands doesn't really beat it with leftovers and Iron Defense. Uh, Ursa Luna cannot beat this thing without like Shadow Claw. I think the only thing it truly doesn't do great into is Heatran, because if you Terra Water, they can just Terra Grass Terra Blast you, and if you decide not to Terra Water, Heat Wave is pretty annoying. You do Solid into Rillaboom because you wall all of its stabs, or you wall its stab, uh, while also, you know, not really caring about U-Turn or anything. Knockoff can be a little bit frustrating, and even if you want to get crazy with it, like, I don't know, I don't think this is a great set, but Rocky Helmet, if you really want to, you can switch it in on, like, I don't know, an Urshifu or something if you want to get wacky with it. Also, into like Golden Go, it's a switch in to make it rain. And if you Terrastalize into a water type, they, they like don't beat you without nasty plotting up on you. So it's good in the specs. So yeah, Bronzong, just a really solid Pokemon. My final pick is going to be Thunderous Therian, which some would argue isn't a sleeper pick anymore because of how consistently it's been doing well in these tournaments. It, you always see like one Thunderous Therian team on like rain, in, in like a high placement in one of these teams, but it's not a lot of Thunderous Therian. A lot of people aren't turned on to it yet, but uh, I am here to sell you on Thunderous Therian. Thunderous Therian is a solid Pokemon. 145 base special attack, 101 base speed. You're naturally outspeeding Chi Yu. If you go timid, you always outspeed it and you just run like four HP. Who cares? Maybe four defense. Maybe that's more optimal. Um, and there are a couple of options you can run, right? Normally you want it on rain because you want to click Wild Bolt Storm, the most ridiculous move in the game when it doesn't miss. 100 base power, 20% chance to paralyze the targets, hits both targets. That's really good. You also want Volt Switch to be able to pivot in and out. Uh, protect if you're not running choice specs. And obviously the final move, Terra Blast. Why? Why would you run Terra Blast? Well, actually, Thunderous doesn't get any special flying type coverage that is... Well, actually, it doesn't get any. I was going to say any that's good, but it doesn't get any, period. Uh, so by running Terra Blast and Terra Flying, what happens is... Uh, let's put like a life orb on this for the sake of example. You end up with one of the most powerful attacks in the game. It is a 80 base power move with adaptability on it because you're terastalized. So let's change it to 160 base power. That's like what? Hyper beam power. And it's flying type and you have a life orb and it's off of 145 base special attack. A good comparison to this would be Porygon Z clicking, um... Tri attack. It's like as strong as Porygon Z Tri attack. Actually, it's stronger because it's 145 and you're faster. 
So like that's that's a good benchmark for the damage you're gonna do. So yeah, that's really solid. The only downside with Thunderous T is that it's not super bulky. You don't wanna run it bulky because you really need that speed to get the most out of it. Uh, and on top of that, it basically has to be on rain. You're not getting any value out of it if there's no rain on the field because your best move is Wild Bolt Storm. And if you miss that move, you're in a world of hurt. Yesterday I was playing on ladder and I was streaming to friends um, and I like missed three Wild Bolt Storms that I really needed to land the game to win. I only had to land, land like one, right? And I lost because of that. Uh, and that's because I didn't get my rain up in time. I just like lost the rain and I wasn't able to get it back up. So I ended up losing off of that. But yeah, uh, also the Volt Absorb is really good because you can pair it with like water types and stuff. And as a flying type with, you know, flying type isn't the best defensive typing. You're weak to rock, ice, and uh, electric, which are all very good offensive moves or typings. So by having Volt Absorb, you're down to two weaknesses and you recover health every time you get hit by one of these. So something that I've been doing is I've been running it with like Terra Water Wo Chen. And when I have uh, Wo Chen in versus a Iron Hands and they want to go for a a uh, wild charge i'll actually just bait them into going for that wild charge into me and swap in thunderous theory and get my health back and just be a menace so yeah these are my uh top five sleeper picks in the format right now i'm sure there are more you can make an argument for so go ahead and comment those down below if you have any but yeah if you enjoyed leave a like subscribe turn on notifications and i'll see you in the next one bye